Hi students, welcome. Today we want to do a topic called chemistry of gases, lesson one. We are going to see the introduction side of the chemistry of the gases and we are saying in this chapter we will discuss the entire chemistry of gases in details based on their laboratory preparations, their physical properties, tests of the gases, their chemical properties and also their uses. The gases in chemistry syllabus include the following in the table below. So in form 1, we have oxygen gas and also hydrogen gas. In form 2, we have carbon 2 oxide gas and also carbon peroxide gas. So in form 3, is where we have a lot of gases. The first gas is methane gas. We also have ethane gas. We have ethane gas. We also have nitrogen gas. We have nitrogen 1 oxide gas. We have nitrogen 2 oxide gas. We have nitrogen peroxide gas, we have ammonia gas, we have sulfur peroxide gas, we have sulfur 6 oxide gas, we have hydrogen sulfide gas, we also have chlorine gas, and we also have hydrogen chloride gas. Those are the gases that we have in form 3. Remember in form 4, we have no gas at all. So let's proceed to methods of drying gases. The method for drying the gas depends on the characteristics of the gas. So we're saying the choice of the drying agent depends on whether the gas and the drying agents react. So if they react, that means the gas cannot be dried using that drying agent or not. So that means if the gas do not react with the drying agent, that means we can use the drying agent to dry that gas. So we're saying drying agents absorb moisture from the gases. Most gases are dried using concentrated sulfuric acid in a conical flask or anhydrous calcium chloride, anhydrous calcium chloride or calcium oxide in a YouTube. So that means we have three drying agents in the lab. One is concentrated sulfuric acid. The other one is anhydrous calcium chloride, and the third one is calcium oxide. So if we are using concentrated sulfur 6 acid, that concentrated sulfur 6 acid will be put in a conical flask. If you are dealing with anhydrous calcium chloride or calcium oxide, it will be placed in a YouTube. So we go to the first drying agent, concentrated sulfur 6 acid. So this is how the setup looks like. So we are having concentrated sulfur 6 acid in a conical flask. This is the conical flask. So here we have wet hydrogen gas or wet gas. So when it's dried using concentrated sulfur 6 acid, we are going to have the dry hydrogen gas or the dried gas. So this is a sample where we are going to have a laboratory preparation of chlorine gas. So this chlorine gas is dried using concentrated sulfur 6 acid. So in our case here, it is placed in a jerrycan or a spirator. So let us see it examples of gases dried using concentrated sulfuric acid they include one oxygen gas hydrogen gas carbon 2 oxide gas carbon peroxide gas nitrogen gas sulfur peroxide gas chlorine gas and also hydrogen chloride gas so all these are gases which can be dried using concentrated sulfuric acid so if you are having maybe here wet hydrogen gas and the gas is dipped into concentrated sulfur acid, which is acting as a drying agent, then that we are going to have our dry hydrogen gas there. So in this experiment where we are going to collect chlorine gas, the, the gas will be placed in concentrated sulfur acid to dry the gas or to remove moisture, and dry chlorine gas is now collected by that method of gas collection. So we are saying here, note, where gas cannot be dried using concentrated sulfur six acid as it reacts to form ammonium sulfate. So remember we said uh, we have to first of all check whether the drying agent can react with the gas. So that means ammonia gas cannot be dried using concentrated sulfur six acid which is a drying agent because the two reacts to form ammonium sulfate. So we are going to have the equation ammonia gas, but as concentrated sulfur acid, we are going to get ammonium sulfate. In chemical equation, balanced chemical equation, we are having two moles of ammonia gas reacting with concentrated sulfur acid, giving us one mole of ammonium sulfate. So again, next we are saying hydrogen chloride gas cannot be dried using concentrated sulfur acid as it will be oxidized to sulfur. 
So here we are going to have hydrogen sulfide gas plus concentrated sulfuric acid. We are going to get sulfur plus water. So the equation, chemical equation is three moles of hydrogen sulfide. We react with one mole of sulfuric acid, giving us four moles of sulfur. And also we are having one mole of water. That will be how we are going to balance the equation. So this side of hydrogen is not balanced. So we're going to put four, four moles of water there. So the second dried agent that we're going to have is anhydrous calcium chloride or fused calcium chloride. So this is a, a setup or a diagram that, uh, that this is a YouTube and in the YouTube we have anhydrous calcium chloride. So the second drying agent is anhydrous calcium chloride. Uh, we said anhydrous calcium chloride will be placed in a YouTube. So this is the YouTube. So we're going to have the wet oxygen gas or the wet gas here, and this gas will burst anhydrous calcium chloride in, uh, in the YouTube. Then it will be dried. So we're going to get dry oxygen gas. So let's see first of all the gas example of the gases that are dried using anhydrous calcium chloride. They include oxygen gas hydrogen gas, carbon two oxide gas, carbon oxide gas, nitrogen gas, sulfur oxide gas, hydrogen sulfide gas, chlorine gas, and also hydrogen chloride gas. So all those gases are gases which can be dried using anhydrous calcium chloride. So let's check uh, an experiment or here, this experiment here, we are having a gas and that gas is formed between the reaction between zinc granules and dilute hydrochloric acid that gas will be passed through YouTube containing anhydrous calcium chloride. So the role of the anhydrous calcium chloride is to dry the gas or act as a drying agent. Then that gas will be collected by that method of gas collection that you see up there. So we are going to see a uh, note. We are saying ammonia gas cannot be dried using anhydrous calcium chloride. So the reason is that we are saying ammonia Ammonia reacts to form tetraamine calcium chloride complex. So you see, ammonia gas cannot be dried using anhydrous calcium chloride as it reacts to form tetraamine calcium chloride complex. To write the question that support that statement, ammonia gas plus anhydrous calcium chloride, we are going to get tetraamine calcium chloride complex. In the chemical equation, we are having calcium chloride solid plus four moles of ammonia gas, giving us now. A tetraamine calcium chloride complex which is written CLCL two dot four NH3 and that's as well. So the third is uh, calcium oxide or quick lime. That's the third drying agent that we have in the chemistry lab. Let's start first of all. Example of the gases dried using calcium oxide include oxygen gas, hydrogen gas, and also ammonia gas. So let's check this setup. We're having uh, a gas that, that's produced by when ammonium chloride and calcium hydroxide are heated. Then that with the gas produced is dried using quicklime or calcium oxide in a YouTube. Then the gas is dried as shown below or that method of gas collection. Here it's the same. This is the drying tower. Drying tower. So the drying tower is where the drying agent is, is placed. So the drying agent that we have is calcium oxide or quick line and ammonia gas is collected, uh, is collected in the above method of gas collection. So we're saying the example of the gases dried using calcium oxide include ammonia gas. So in these two diagrams, we're having a collection of ammonia gas. So we're having NUT. Note, we are saying carbon peroxide gas, comma, nitrogen peroxide gas, comma, sulfur peroxide gas, comma, chlorine gas, comma, hydrogen chloride gas cannot be dried using calcium oxide as they react with it. Remember, all these gases are acidic gases. Then calcium oxide being basic reacts with the acidic gases to form a salt. So for that reason, we cannot use calcium oxide to dry all these gases.